What's going on out there, family? Star Interstellar here. Hope you're all having an excellent day today. So today I wanna to talk about something that's been coming up in a lot uh, of my sessions, especially recently, and that is what I like to call, or what some people call the narc web, uh, is also the narcissism web. This has to do with um, dynamic between narcissists and empaths, but there's a lot more going on here that a lot of people don't necessarily understand and realize the depth of what this is, the purpose of this, how it relates to our soul growth and evolution as individuals. So I'm gonna be tapping into some of that today and explain what's really going on here in a multi-dimensional dynamic and how we can you know, keep an eye on it, some things to look out for, and also some solutions for it. So to start with, the narc web, the narcissism web, is really, the best way to look at this is, so for starters, this has to do with, you know, what's been called the negative alien agenda, the reptilian agenda, satanic abuse. These different types of things uh, have a lot of their roots in this uh, web of narcissism. And really what this looks like is, you know, when this original uh, fallen matrix was created uh, and we came into the two strand DNA that a lot of us have been familiar with. This essentially has all been a big incubation process. This, you know, I've talked about this in other videos, this entire earth and reality has been much like an egg or a womb. And the important part to understand here is first and foremost, the ability, the ability to have a separate consciousness, the ability to see oneself as separate from other things originally stems from a virus. Now, this virus is essentially the illusion of separation, okay? And the reason for this illusion of separation was in order to allow individuals to occur to allow separate beings to exist, right? There had to be an illusion of disconnection in order for individuals that are meant to be on the eternal life program, paradigm, uh, organic timeline, those beings coming into that egg space, into that womb space to eventually grow up and evolve on this eternal life path, right? But just like a baby goes in the womb, just like a, uh, you know, there, there's an egg that is present when we're uh, evolving, when people have children and things like that, in the human womb, in the lining of the human womb, there is actually a retrovirus that comes from reptilian DNA. Okay, and this of course goes back to the Sumerian Anunnaki and how they came into uh, this, this realm after there was some shifts that went on in uh, different heavenly realms. And this all played into the greater purposes, the overall evolution in the cosmos and with our species. So this retrovirus that is present within the lining of the human mother's wombs allows for the baby to get created and have its own uh, separate identity, essentially to uh, essentially to keep the mother's body from from digesting this. I've talked about this numerous times, but in case you aren't familiar with that, I wanted to give that little backstory to lead into the, the other things here. So, as a child is in a womb, right? They feed from their mother. They get the food from their mother. They get nourishment from their mother, energy from their mother. The whole body is developed from the mother's body, right? And then there comes a time when that child moves out of the womb and it continues to uh, feed off the mother for time in, you know, in the organic way, breastfed and, and things like that. But eventually it grows up, it moves on and it becomes, has its own individuality, its own consciousness, it chooses what it eats itself, all these different things, right? And so really this has been going on on a much larger scale as well because you see in the eternal life paradigm coming out of the mother's womb isn't the only step. 
right? It's there's there's continued evolution. So there's another energetic womb from there, and there's there's more and more energetic uh, wombs, so to speak, or realities uh, that are present at, or around us that serve as kind of a womb of sorts, right? Well, this if we look at humanity now as a child of sorts, a child within cosmic development, the interdimensional reptilians, right? Their interdimensional reptilians for humans, for adults, well, for children too, but, you know, in terms of evolving and growing, there's a unseen web of these reptilian forces, okay, these reptilian beings, uh, call them what you want, and these forces, of course, are all being cleared and transmuted, and a lot, for a lot of us, have been cleared and transmuted at this time, but this interdimensional web of reptilians, right, what they are is akin to another lining, right, we can look at them in the, as in being in the fourth dimension, okay, there's a 3D linear time matrix. Then there's the fourth dimension, which is in between. This is this lining of the womb. And then we have 5D consciousness. So in order to allow certain individuals to grow up, to evolve into the 5D higher realms, co-creator timelines, there's been this interdimensional web, which we could also call the narcissism web. So a lot of times the way that this takes place is when a child comes out of the womb, if the parents have not themselves evolved uh, into the 5D and higher realms, if they aren't uh, co-creators in their own right, they still have these, uh, and, and this really comes down to whether or not they're sourced internally from creator within, the internal source, the internal source that provides all the uh, love needed, all the unconditional love needed, the ability to source within the self to fulfill desires, needs, wants, and things like that, right? Because that is the original, uh, that is the original plan in evolution to have that internal source to actually be what fulfills us in that internal source is a well that gives us the ability to co-create. So if parents, friends, loved ones, teachers, whatever, if they are not internally sourced, they are a host for this narcissist web, right? This web of essentially reptilian and other uh, spiritual forces manipulation, right? Because if one is not sourced within the self, it essentially creates a sort of empty vessel in a way, right? Where if one is not sourced in the self, they're still looking externally to the womb, to others, to the reality around them to, to feed, to get their needs met. Or, um, and I'm not saying that there's, there's anything wrong with needs per se, but to get these different unsourced needs met, right? There's this dynamic where it's like, you know, in order to be happy or fulfilled or loved, it has to come from another person, another thing, another place, money, all these different, whatever it is, right? All these different things in order to feel whole, to feel complete, to feel connected, to feel loved. And so that looking outside, what it does is it invites in energetic dynamics, uh, these reptilian forces, these other spiritual forces to inhabit us and then control or manipulate uh, our movements, our thoughts, our actions, and things like that. And this is really, uh, what this does is this creates the cycles of trauma, of uh, the, the, essentially what these forces do is they play on our shadows. Our shadows, of course, have to do a lot with our birth charts, human design charts, different uh, blueprints and imprints and things like that. And those shadows, those traumas, those experiences that are created in that manipulation, what they actually really are, are our future bodies. There are food in a lot of ways that we get to learn how to digest in order to produce 
our next levels, our next layers of evolution, our next bodies, essentially, right? And this is the whole, uh, you know, the, the paradox of the phoenix or the dragonfly or the butterfly, how those different types of creatures, they go into a cocoon and then eventually they digest their own body, their own cocoon to produce their new body. Right, and this is essentially the process that's going on. So we have these sh shadows, traumas, programmings, and conditionings, and things like that. And until we start to process them, to move them, to confront them, uh, then we essentially can remain stuck in that web, right? That that web of narcissism, where you know narcissists, what essentially they attract empaths because narcissists essentially uh, they have a way of not being able to look at their own trauma within so they manifest others to be sensitive to their trauma and their needs and things like that in order to get that fulfillment right the ideally what that situation is providing is the necessary reflection for the narcissist to learn how to develop uh, the ability to process and shift the trauma within the self. Now the empath, uh, the other side, see the narcissist, and this is the whole thing, right? Narcissism coming from narcissists is the narcissist essentially falls in love with its shadow self, right? It's lower self, it's traumas, it's wounds, it's conditions, it, the, the, the lower ego mind, right? It essentially falls in love with that reflection, what those lower needs want and desire and things like that. And the empath is the other side of the coin, right? It's the empath falls in love with its trauma within the other, right? And the need to assist, to help, to uh, nurture, right? Is that, that other way around where uh, it still cannot uh, a lot of times confront its own trauma in certain situations. I'm not saying that all empaths have this, Right, that's not what I'm saying by any sense of the word. But with there's an empath narcissist dynamic, this is usually essentially what's going on. Okay, and this has all provided a greater purpose, a greater experience and evolution because the empaths you see uh, are generally star seeds, uh, indigos, these different uh, beings that came from specific places by choice. Uh, they came here by choice to because they essentially knew that they eventually would be able to source within the self, right? Because this is how this dynamic comes in, right? So the empath, a very tapped in, spiritually sensitive, psychic, empathic, intuitive being comes in as this child. And usually a lot of times these children will choose uh, choose parents and family friend situations with narcissists because they came here with a mission to assist in transmuting this into helping humanity move on from this but essentially what this dynamic looks like is the child be being extra sensitive uh, then creates this gap or this void within themselves to be able to become sensitive to the, the trauma, the reptilian forces, the spirits, the different things like that around them. Um, but in the child state, in the baby state, this creates an interesting dynamic because the actual, the child in that child state needs the parent or the friends or the guardians to take care of it. So it becomes sensitive to those wants, those needs, those desires, those spirits that are present for survival, okay? And this also had a bigger purpose in mind because eventually that star seed, the seed of a star, right? This is essentially what that is because we all come from stars. We have that seed, that remembrance of source, that remembrance of life, uh, of starlight within ourselves and that is the star seed that eventually this longing to return home would remind the star seeds of or indigos whoever they are it's just the term star seeds really that or it could be even be a star spore um, very mycelial like in this network I want to thank my friend good friend Livy for that star spore uh, analogy there 
But yeah, essentially the seed of remembrance of coming from this other place is the seed of remembrance of sourcing from the cell, so of sourcing creator and unconditional love within because that's stars produce their own source of unconditional love. This is, they are sources unto themselves, right? And so this is... This, this is why there's that longing in terms of so many people's hearts and energy bodies where they, they've created that seeking because they're ideally attracting to themselves those situations which will bring to them uh, the, the, the other spore, the one that has had the reconnection to source within to reconnect them with source within. And so like a mycelial web, this... Christ consciousness, Sophia Christ consciousness can grow. And so, yeah, so in terms of, in terms of things to look out for, things to be aware of, right? So there are a lot of these different dynamics that, that can go on. Uh, a lot of times it specifically comes from families, friends, different people with addictions. That can be something that is, um, continuing to play people into the the narcissist web there can be uh in all sorts of addictions addictions to love addictions to sex sex is a huge one um the all these external sourcing things because what they are doing is they are then taking all of that light and that energy and, and feeding into these lower shadow timelines which essentially are our own shadow timelines and any sort of situation where it places any power outside of the self, any God, government, lover, uh, food, any sort of thing where it's placing that energetic dynamic outside of the self, this is a sure sign that there is still an interplay going on with the, the narcissist web. And there's a need to reconnect with that source of unconditional love within the self to start to love those shadow selves, those egoic selves, back into, back into the source of unconditional love within. If you feel like you may be part of this web or manipulated by this web or uh, anything like this, um, this is a specialty of mine, reconnecting people to that source, shifting, transmuting those traumas, re-pulling those aspects of your source, your energy, your light, your aspects of self back into your original source code and being an organic blueprint. Uh, this is a big part of what I do. If you've gotten anything out of this content too, go ahead and like, comment, share. I really appreciate you all. And if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one session, I would love that. Links below, Astara Interstellar. I hope you have a beautiful day.